the Chicago Cubs. And now let's go to Gary Thorne, John Cruck, and Steve Phillips out at Wrigley Field as first pitch approaches. Broadcasting live, Major League Baseball. Hi, everybody. Friday afternoon. I'm Gary Thorne with Steve Phillips and John Cruck at 2K Sports. Bronson Arroyo has become one of the game's outstanding pitchers. Today, we'll have a chance to watch his work on the hill. So tonight, a look around this stadium, 41,000 strong. There's starter, Edwin Jackson. And Steven, as he gets into the Cincinnati lineup, what are we expected to see? Well, the good right-handed pitcher on the mound right here facing this lineup that can score some runs. It's going to be critical for him to keep the ball down to the zone and pitch to his capabilities. If he does that, he should have success. Let's check out the lineup Dusty Baker has put together for this ball game. And our scouting report, John, who are we watching for today? Joey Votto can do it all. He's a complete hitter at the plate. He can hit the ball the other way for singles. He can hit it the other way for home runs. Power to all fields. Now his defense is caught up with his offense. That's why he's one of the best in the game. And leading it off, Shinsu Chu. Called strike, Jackson's getting one one. The hitter thought that ball was inside. It certainly wasn't low, and it looks like it was in there. Here's the delivery. There's a swing and a smash. And it's going to be DeJesus as he just strolls over for that one. Here's how the Cubs stack up defensively. John, is scouting anyone here? Well, every team likes a guy like Ian Stewart who can take the field anywhere inside the diamond. He continues to improve defensively because of hard work. He plays multiple positions. He has the versatility to start a game at one position and move to the next and not miss a beat. And Brandon Phillips digs in with one out. Another good year for Brandon Phillips in 2012 with 281 average to go along with 18 home runs. You got to love that kind of production out of second base. Oh! No luck that time for Jackson. He misses inside. And for Brandon Phillips, a third straight season where he ended with 18 home runs. Showed he still has speed as well. 15 stolen bases, John. Yeah, and I think when you look back at his career when it's finally over, you're going to say that we might have saw one of those underrated players. As far as defense goes, there's none at second base that can compare to him. That's how good he is. And then you look at the power. He can do a lot of things to help his team win no matter what position he hits in the lineup. when he arrived. Buster Posey's been a leader on the field, and that's what you want from your catcher. He has to take charge of the pitching staff, but he also has to take charge of the running game, and he has done that as good as anybody. Kane gets it and delivers. Swung on and fouled away. The pitch. Oh, oh my, is he wild on one pitch? It's a foul by Phillips. Line hard down the left field line. And that one's down. That's the first hit we've seen. 
And he'll stop at second base, and it will be a double. Now this pitch just cuts right over the heart of the plate. The hitter handled it perfectly. Mm. That's one of those where you've uh, you've given in by making a bad pitch and and really made it much easier for the hitter. Yeah, he's better than that. Bear down. And it's Joey Votto now. Certainly not a lot of bright spots for the Cubs last season. Uh, they've got some young players though who are getting a chance to play. And what they've got to hope for is that these kids develop. Here's the pitch. Strike two. Joey Votto may have to cut down on that swing a little here. When you look at the Cubs and their rookies from last year, they look to have some solid bats, maybe some big power that'll be rattling Wrigley's team. I want to give some credit to the organization, too. They shed some of the dead weight, kind of taking it apart to build it back up and collecting some young talent that paid off quick dividends for them. The Cubs could look to have a much better time ahead this year. Runner on second, RBI opportunity. Here's Ryan Ludwig. And in this matchup, lifetime 281 off the Cubs. And here's the delivery. Ludwig makes contact. He'll foul it away. And he leaves that one alone. Ryan Ludwig shows patience. i leave leaving up the count. Well, he tried that four-seam fastball up in the zone to get him the chase. Tough pitch to lay off of. Good job by the hitter. 1-1 one, one pitch, slider, taken for a strike, one and two. Now two strikes out, they're probably going to throw on the slider here. He struggled with it. End of this inning with a nice piece of pitching work as he gets the K. So they pick up the man at second and fail to score. And the Cubs, their first chance coming up. David Jesus now to lead it off. He's a veteran. He brings veteran knowledge to this club. Court center field, and it's going to be Chu. He comes up with it easily here. Well, let's take a look at that lineup for the Cubs. John, who do we keep an eye on? Well, David DeJesus is not the guy you're going to look at as the star of the team. But he's a guy that you need if you're going to win ball games. Very consistent player, does a lot of things well. But what he does do is give you everything he has every single day on the field. And that, to me, is the winning player. We've got a chance to check out the Reds here. Let's look at their defense. And uh, John, any scouting picks? Well, it isn't all about making the highlight play. What you like in a corner outfielder is that consistency. And that's Ryan Ludwig. You hit it to him, he's going to make the play. He's not going to hurt you. He's not going to throw the ball to the wrong base. He's not going to overthrow the cutoff man. He is what you would call a consistent outfielder who just gets the job done day in and day out. There's a strike from Arroyo, now 0-1. You know, it's been a long time since the Reds have won a playoff game at home, and it looked like they would break that streak last year, but they were on the wrong end of an incredible comeback from the Giants in the NLDS. That second pitch cuts on a fastball, misses, and it's 0-2. Back to the Reds uh, about the playoffs last year. They took the first two games in San Francisco. Three straight chances to close out at home, John. It was amazing. And it all came down to fielding in each one of those games. Jackson with the delivery. That one swung out and missed by Bruce, and the strike evens it up. The scouting reports indicate when the count is one and one, he's really aggressive. So I'm being real careful on this pitch. One one on the way towards center field, and it's caught by the Hazel. One away. And it's Todd Frazier now. One away. Lifetime, he's gone 0 for 2 against Edwin Jackson. Oh. 
This one's grounded foul wide of first. That ball is belted deep left center. That ball is way back there. And goodbye, the home run for the Reds. They are on the board. And they get the first run of the ball game. That solo shot, that is a big fly ball, one nothing. Well, for the Reds, they've been plugging away in this game and have taken an important lead. We'll watch to see if they can keep the offense moving. He deals. Swings and misses at the fastball. 0-1. And you know what I like to call these thoughts of home runs, guys, momentum home runs. This stage of the ball game, it oftentimes propels the offense the rest of the way. And deflates the pitching, too. I mean, he's already working from behind, and this is a lineup that's looking to do more damage. And if he can't keep his composure, well, this setting uh, can go from bad to worse in a hurry. Fouled off. That's oh, well just about had him, and it's a 2 2 count. Well, he tried to go outside on the outside corner with that fastball right there. Just got a little bit off the plate. He's got to be careful, though. You don't want that hitter to get his arms extended. Slider swung out and missed. Two down. That's oh, a pretty fast pitch right there, and hard to get that much break on it. Fantastic.